Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial videos where we are finally putting our skills of pivots and sliders to the test and learning how to make a crane. So you should have the basic fundamentals of at least the slider and pivot controls and how they work if you don't take a look at my videos for those things. And in this video we're going to be building a crane. Now I wouldn't consider this beginner but somewhere between beginner and intermediate okay so it's not difficult it is just uh, a little bit of physics and application to make it work so let's get going just like in real life and just like in stormworks there are lots of ways to solve your problems to accomplish your tasks so we have different types of pivots now for the base so before i begin i just want to mention this may not be the best way or the most optimal or your favorite way but this is the way i do it okay so there, you're free to experiment hopefully this will give you a nice starting point so what i was going to say is the base i like to use the velocity pivots and the reason for that is the velocity pivots can spin around forever so as the base of your crane you can spin around that pivot point as many as many times as you want whereas the robotic pivots will be limited to um 0.25 turns in each direction. So for the base, I prefer to use the ones that can spin around forever. Okay. Now, of course, on this, you can have sort of an extension. And then the next part that I like to put is a um, robotic pivot in this case. And you put it like that. And now that gives you the flexibility to raise that boom arm up and down. And same thing here. Now you could use a large style pivot for this point. Just be sure to, um, you know, clean it up. <laughs> that looks a little bit funny, but anyways, point is these two right now are the same thing. They just use different style and different size pivots. And obviously the compact one looks a little smaller while this one for sure is stronger so you have small versus strength you can see that well the motor powers are the same and sometimes as i said in other videos and other comments you know the gearing ratios and stuff you have to really play around with it and tune it up but in general the larger ones are stronger in addition to the fact they can transmit um fluid or power anyway they are this is now so far the same thing and now we have the ability to add a compact linear track on top of this and i'm just going to show you something here so you want to put it as close to that pivot point as possible and the reason for that is of course if you put a winch on the end of this the more you um you can double the length right you're going to slide this out and you're going to double the length so you for sure don't want to put this over here like I mean, not like that but you don't want to put it at the end of the track of course that way you're not going to be able to um, slide out further right you're limited right there so you'll want to put it as close to the base part as possible and go from there now this is where you can absolutely go crazy you can put track attached to another track and I'm just doing this as a demonstration of course you can clean it up as necessary make it a more compact design i'm just kind of giving you the basis of this so if you take a look at this now especially in this mode here what will happen is the blue one will slide down the purple track while the yellow one slides down the blue track so now it is three times the size or three times the length and of course then you'd put your winch at the end of this and, it, and if you do want to give yourself a little extra power, this is what I do on my um, my rat truck uh, crane, is I actually put twin um, these pivots on my controller or on my truck. So it actually looks like this. Now just be careful to make it match the same um, direction. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself conflicting so you'll want to lift this like that and put it in here however you see the arrows are not lining up 
So you can press U and now the arrows are lining up. And if we join that up, join that up, you can see how that works. So of course, I'm not a fan of this not being centered here. So personally, I'd probably push this out and have it be equivalent. So just lift that into place. Again, make sure the arrows are pointed in the same direction. And then you can go ahead and put a joint there and attach this. So really, this now here is optimized as far as strength goes on this bottom bit. Um, on top, of course, I'm just demonstrating to you, I definitely would not do it this way. You'd probably want to lower this track since I'm just going to show you real fast. You'll probably want to lower this piece down here and then have some kind of other method of attaching it rather than that, what I had here. So the problem is now you, you've kind of stuck with this weird setup, but if you push this out by one, you can attach these back together and then you can put a piece like that. Now, this won't work, so you have to be very careful with your physics because it will be hitting this piece right here. And of course, if you delete that, then it's not really realistic because now it's just floating. So again, you have to play around with this. The best way, in my opinion, is to invert this thing. So what I just did here, instead of that, you'll take this and you'll put it upside down now. And again, you want to make sure your arrows are pointed in the same direction where possible because that's going to help your microcontroller after the fact. So again, you now lay your track just like this. Now just be mindful of the direction. So there you have it. And then here, that bottom piece that is this um, green, that is what's going to be coming out here. So that is where you can kind of do this and you'll put the winch on the end. And again, you can double this up, you could triple this up, you could make this as big as possible. And of course, this micro, this uh, smaller crane is the same thing. So we're not going to worry about making it work. The only difference is you could see here that it's um, rotational speed, rotational speed. Up here, you have rotation target. Up here, you have rotation target. So the difference is only the size. So the microcontroller will work on both of these. Now, let's say that we're happy with this. Of course, you can kind of clean it up, fix the aesthetics up a little bit. You can put like a frame around it if you so desire or whatever. Just have to be very careful not to block off some of this back stuff. Like if you put this here, that won't actually work because now the blue can't physically slide out. So if you do want to block the back, I suggest doing it on this piece. And you still have to give this thing wiggle room in there to move because of course this is going to be moving um, rotating, so you want to make sure not to um, impede any of its travel, otherwise you will notice a problem. Alright, anyways, there's many different styles and things you can do, but we're just going to kind of stick with a very simple style here. And now, we can start to develop the microcontroller, but before we do that, we'll need to put a battery, and we'll need to put a way to control the thing. Now in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put a seat. Um, hopefully I've shown you enough videos to determine whether if you want a seat or whether you just want to control it via buttons. But of course the seat will give us kind of the flexibility of selecting multiple things. And of course then you just got to plug in your batteries, your battery to all this stuff. And now, pretty much we are stuck with a couple of things. Now you can go ahead and plug in, just as an example, you could plug the W and S here onto this pivot. You can plug the up and down or whatever to this thing here and here. You can also plug A and D, for example, into your sliders. And note that right now they're all set on reset. The, the problem you'll see here, so this is not a way that I recommend it. You may want to skip the gun. Of course, that is not what I intended. The base is not attached. Oh yeah, you also could attach the base to an actual another sliding track and have this, for example, move around the deck of your ship. But we're, that's just uh, using a simple slider track, so we're not going to cover that. Anyways, you hop in your seat and now watch. 
I've pressed W. And of course, now what's happening is the crane is reacting and it's spinning with speed. Um, at a maximum speed and as I let go, that is tapering off. So remember, it's acting like a um, accelerator. Like it's slowly revving up to one and dropping down to one. So that was the um, W and S. So yeah, you can work it this way, but I, I don't recommend it because it's unstable or not really logical. Anyways, that is one system. Now A and D can slide this out and you can slide this out. Now again, same issue. You're pressing it and it kind of ramps up to one and then stops and ramps up to negative one and stops. And then if we go up and down, you could see this works, except it's set on push. So it's not really staying at that level. So that one is the easiest to fix. So the um, up and down axis right now, which controls the up and down of these pivots, you could see because we have a number input, which is between, um, it moves it in degrees of 0.25 movement. So when you set it to one, it's 0.25 motion. This is easily fixed by just going into up and down and setting it to be sticky in theory now. And you could also, um, kind of make this quite a low sensitivity so we don't go on forever. But now if we go here and press up and down, you could see now it is moving fast and it's also hitting that butt back there as I go up to the top. So that little, um, aesthetic piece here is actually hitting with this as it moves. But in theory, I press up, I'm pressing, letting go, pressing, letting go, and it moves and it stays stationary. So this system works with the seat, no microcontroller needed. Um, like I said, this back piece, not a fan without it, we're going to have better success. So that worked quite simply. Uh, but what you now will want to tune up is this, um, rotation pivots here and the rotation pivots here. Now note there are different types or sorry. Um, the rotation pivot here is set the, uh, linear track and this base. So what we'll want to do is again, start off with our empty microcontroller. And first things first, ask ourselves, what do we need to put into this microcontroller? So of course you have number input and of course you have number output. So quite simply right there is the basis of your microcontroller. So you have your input going to, let's start off with the uh, velocity pivot. And then here going to our seat, we said was going to be, I think it was a and or W and S, uh, that doesn't make sense. Better to have it A and D rotates it. That's much better. And then we can have the, um, what I like to have is A and D rotates it. That makes logical sense. W and S should actually be moving this thing up and down in my opinion, but again, million ways to do this. So I'm just going to quickly change that to W and S again. We just set it to sticky. We could put it like at 20%. We just have to be careful because now this one here is still set to sticky. So we'll see if that really helps us or not. Most likely we're going to want to set it to reset, but we're going to get to that later. So again, the, uh, rotation going to our W and S. So this is the actual like up and down, um, is done. And so boom, boom up and down. Now this thing here, I said this was going to be A and D. Now, A and D, we're going to want to set to 100% reset, and we'll call this slew. So that is the rotation around the base. And with that, now set to 100% and reset, we can go into this microcontroller. And quite simply, you do something with, you could do something in many different ways, but the easiest would be threshold. So you have the threshold attached to both of these. If you are in the 0.1 range all the way up to one, or you could even put like 999 or 9,000, whatever. So if you're anywhere in the positives, this happens here. If you are anywhere in the negatives, then this bottom one happens. And what is it that happens? Well, quite simply, you could put a numerical switch box. And then in addition, 
set that to your input. So these ones go through there. And now this will turn on if this happens, this turns on if this happens. And here, you now have your value on and value off. Well, value off is going to be zero, meaning you just leave it as it is. But value on is what you need to change up. Now, what I always like to do is make it very easy and adjustable. So I like to put in this and you could say here, um, speed. Because remember, it's a velocity pivot, so it sets whatever speed it is, um, whatever speed you're putting into is how fast it spins. Max value 1, rounding point 1, we'll start off with like point 3. And minimum value is 0, if you really don't want it to spin, probably you should set it to point 1, to be honest. So that is your speed. And of course, if you plug it into here and here, you'll get them both moving in the same direction. So you will need a little function right here and you plug it into this with the set to negative x you then attach that to this value down there so now that will function the way you want it to and we can go ahead and test it out so again we know that our w and or a and d will rotate it now that is way too fast so that has to be turned down and then if we do our w and s you can actually see it's inverse. I'm holding up and it goes down. Also, it stays attached way too long. So we have to decrease the sensitivity there. So that is a fix that you can do here by actually rotating this and this piece. Now, it's, you do have to yank it out, select everything but this, move this all back, attach it to their proper sort of systems and then take this thing and rotate it because clearly what I had it on was moving it up and down so we now see the arrow is pointed in this direction and now it's inversed so we put this back in here you could see that we lost a little bit of our aesthetic if you could call it that um, but pretty much there you go. So that should have fixed the issue with moving up and down when I pressed the wrong buttons. Of course, you also could put a function and just uh, invert it. So put a negative, like you could have just left them in place, put this here, put this in the seat with a negative, but I like to avoid using as many microcontrollers as possible. So this is how you can do that. Now this speed, and of course this is max power and it has a gear ratio. So you could see that when we were pressing that, it was doing 0.3. So that could be way too fast for this. And you could try all the way down to 0.1. Also, remember we had the issue where I pressed W and S and I said the stickiness has to change. So let's reduce it to five. And now if we go and test this out, I guess I didn't attach it fully. So that is something you'll want to make sure you do first. Um, double check that whatever it is that you yanked off. There you go. That should do the trick. So that's why I don't like cutting them out or at least not right away. But anyways, now we're holding W and S and something is locking it in place. But here I'm spinning it at a much better speed. Now note that right now I'm holding D and it's moving to that side. So I will want to invert that. Now that is much easier to invert here. You just uh, press this U button and that is that is it so I did also accidentally um, double paste so I'm just gonna reconnect this quickly and reconnect it to the battery but that should be solved now this thing here we said that it's currently not rotating up and down so that has to be looked into and it clearly everything is attached but there is some issue hitting this that'll be a quick reminder of what not to do so Try not to do stuff like that because then you will end up potentially messing it up. Or if you do intend to do stuff like that, do it before you set up the rest of your um, boom. So in this case, you could see even now it's giving me the issue. And it seems it's because it was not plugged in. Not Both of them weren't plugged in. So that was my mistake. It seems that if this gets plugged in, this should now properly work. So that was a little bit of troubleshooting. I didn't plan to do that. There you go. 
So now it is moving up and down at a nice speed, and as soon as I let go, it stops. So now moving, let go, stops. Moving, let go, stops. And we could spin it. And now, of course, that is me holding W. This is me holding S. This is A. This is D. So now we're moving around quite simply here around this point. Again, I went ahead and deleted all this stuff, but that is okay because I'm going to try to create a bit of a cleaner system. So we'll take our linear base track and again, putting everything in the same direction. And actually, we could try to triple it up to get as long of this thing as we can and make it quite compact at this end. So this one and then this one is upside down and then this one is right side up. And of course, all of these themselves will uh, move to the end of their respective tracks. And then this one is the one where we attach the winch to. So maybe this, what I don't like about this system, as good as it looks at least, is that this is offset. So now you have some eccentricity about the central point. So not a fan of that personally. I would try to not have this be there, but rather have your winch on that middle arm or on a middle location. But of course, you can't quite, well, you can try to do this. And then I guess this is sort of a, a bit of a jerry rigged way, but a way nonetheless. So now you are moving about your central point when you lift. However, you are still putting an eccentricity on this joint, which is not great. And then we could also just clean up this design if you so desire, like I said before. And this is really something that's up to you. Just note that you do this too much. You may limit your actual crane's ability to move because you may end up inadvertently putting a block that blocks it from moving. But regardless, that is there. And remember now the issue we had with the sliding track or this linear track, sorry, is that it was moving almost um, at the speed. It was doing the same thing that this one, that the bottom one did. So first we're gonna try to use this exact same microcontroller and I have a feeling that it's gonna work, okay? I'm gonna try to be positive with that one. So let's set it to be left and right on our, on our keyboard just because left and right can be that moving out and then up and down could be the winch moving, for example. Or you could also set your winch to be, you know, hotkey one and two. I sometimes do that just to minimize the amount of microcontrollers. But regardless, right now we've set left and right to be um, extend the boom. Now we're going to want to set this to 100% again. So note, whenever you're using this microcontroller, you want to set it to 100% reset because then as soon as you're not pressing it, it jumps down to zero. Whereas if you had it sticky it would stay on forever and if you had it too low it would like have a delay so you want to put it to 100 percent anyways let's take a look at whether this system works or not now so first a d w and s and then if i hold left or actually right that's me holding right it is moving outwards so again we had a pretty compacted system now note because they're all at the same speed they kind of more or less come out at the same time which is quite nice and then you could retract it by holding left so whether that's the system you want maybe up and down would make more logical sense to you especially if you're using one and two for your winch but that is a way to now make this thing sort of move now it is a little bit kind of floppy and flimsy you could see on that central point but that just comes with weight so if you do want to optimize that you'll want to um, limit the weight a little bit and also limit the speed because that speed is kind of pushing that to be that way. Um, of course, limiting the speed in this case would be a little hard because you set it here to 0.1. So one thing that you could easily do is change the gear ratio. If you increase the gear ratio, it will move slower. So that will move actually probably pretty slow here. Yeah, see? And now it really should not like kind of move that or shouldn't affect that central point too, too much course there's a little bit I mean any crane would have a little bit of a swing as it's that far out but anyways that there seems to be a decent solution and of course this will apply as well to your smaller 
version of the crane. So we're just going to do a quick demonstration here for that. With this little guy here, you put it on the track. You can set this, and then we have an end winch. And we'll just bring in a brand new seat. Well, not a brand new. I'm going to copy this one because it kept all of our settings, all of our um, sensitivity settings and stuff. And then you just had the two of these. I will go ahead and limit the gear ratio on this as well. And remember, so now this will go to this bottom one and this will go to A and D to spin it around. Then over here, we'll go to our uh, sliding track. And then here we'll go to, we had left and right on the other um, control on the other seat. So left and right works. Now here, you can see that you also have the same style connection with the, the rotation target. So I can go ahead and put W and S to that, make sure everything is powered up and let's go take it, take it for a spin. So this microcontroller should work for both of these systems. Now that one is swinging freely. So something is not right here. I have a feeling we didn't connect it to electricity here. There you go. So if it's not connected to electricity, it will be free to move around as it sees fit. If you plug it into electricity and rotate that, see that does not move. And then if I press left, it moves in. If I press right, it is moving out. And then of course we could also pivot it around. Now I'm currently holding D, it's moving around the point to the left. So easy fix, you can apply the uh, move this rotator ro rotating piece around here. So we just press U and then make sure everything's plugged in properly, just like that. So that should proper should work properly now. So both of these in essence now are working as far as having a crane. So very simple and primitive and not very nice looking, but that's where you come in. You can tune them up, make them look as nice as you want. One thing I will mention is with enough force and strength, and if you're on a ship, this can potentially move around and be quite um, damaging to your boat. So I always like to lock it in place. So I'm just going to quickly show you very easily. You can put a thing like this. And then if you check that this guy here, so I'm holding control, you can see that it's a cube. Then you can actually go ahead and delete that piece, add in the slider finally. So then the sliding track, throw it in here, as long as it's attached to what it was previously attached to. And then you can attach the gripper arm and put that there as long as they're in line. And this you attach to a key. And the nice thing about this being attached to a key and then being able to uh, turn it on or off, you activate the crane and it releases that connector. So then in essence, this is locked in place and it won't cause any damage or destruct anything. Now I do have other ways on my ships of doing this. You also could put a electric connector or another type of connector on the front of this and then put a connector on the ground as long as you align it such that it is in the proper place and not to cause any phantom physics. So first you probably want to do a test here by lowering this and taking note of which um, where it touches the ground. So it looks like it's right on that orange piece there. So if we go in here, it was along this orange piece here. So if we put a connector on the ground there and again with a key piece with the um, activated and if it activates it releases so that's actually not good you want it to do the opposite so if it's not activated it releases and then we have to plug it into electricity of course but this is a different system and the nice thing with all these options that you have is you can actually find so this may cause phantom physics once it touches There we go. You could see that it's actually causing a little bit of phantom physics, but regardless, um, and also the knot is not working. It should have been opposite, but that's, so this is one way. This is another way. And you can also lock your whole 
assembly with each other. Like you could take this to the next level. Like see here, it's a track, so you can't do nothing or can't do anything. But if you go down here, you check here, check here, this is a track. But again, so you, you really are limited to finding where you're not deleting a track, but you can, in essence, lock up your creation in multiple ways and multiple places as you could see kind of how I how this was locked up here if we go into this view you can see that there is this uh, gripper right there that prevents this from sliding out and then there's a gripper on the base to prevent it from rotating then there is this connector here that it locks it in place if it's in a storm so you can really do it multiple ways and um, make sure that it is sort of safe and does not flop around and cause damage. But the styling is up to you. There's many ways to do the styling here. You can take it to the next level. You can have a bunch of different sort of um, pivot points to look like this. You can have something that looks like this. And even if you want to have one that can transmit fluid, this is a little tougher, but this is the one I have on my Ulta tanker because it actually has a fluid port at the bottom here that will attach all the way to whatever you plug into this winch. So there's many different formats, many different ways. Of course, this one is also controlled by a remote controller, but we're not going to get into that in this video. You can also use your skills to control the crane via a uh, buttons instead of a seat but again that is your total your call ultimately but there's many different ways to do it and end of the day learning how to make a crane is a very valuable piece of information for stormworks because the way that the cranes operate and the way the game physics works is you need them to access and move certain things so with that you can actually quite nicely apply um, and solve problems here in the game. So, thank you all for watching. Hopefully, you found this video entertaining or valuable to your skills. Regardless, thank you for being here. Stay tuned for more content, for more creations, and as always, happy Stormworksing, everyone.